I'm Borna, your organic chemistry tutor, and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the mechanism of ozonolysis reaction, and the reason why I decided to talk about that is because um, when I was an undergrad, I had a really hard time understanding that mechanism. So here we go. So before I talk about the mechanism of the reaction, I'd like to talk about how this reaction is actually done. Um, so what is happening, like what usually happens is that you dissolve your alkene in DCM, or a solvent similar to that, an uh, inert solvent, and then uh, cool that mixture down to negative 78 using a dry ice acetone bath. And then you have an ozone generator that passes an electric arc through oxygen to generate ozone. And then you bubble that into the uh, solution of the alkene to get an ozonide, which I'm going to talk about it in a second. And then you can subject that to reductive quenching conditions using zinc and acetic acid or dimethyl sulfide or triphenylphosphine or something similar to that which is what is more commonly done and gives you reductive um, or ozonolysis products after reductive quenching, or you can subject the ozonide to oxidative quenching, which, give, which gives you a different set of products. I'm not going to talk about the mechanism of oxidative quenching, um, but I'm going to tell you what products are going to come from um, that kind of reaction. So let's talk about what product results from a regular reductive ozonolysis. So it's very easy to determine what the product is going to be. Essentially what is going to happen is that two oxygens are going to get inserted where the double bond used to be. That's it. Nothing more complicated than that. And in this example, that'll give you a ketone plus formaldehyde. Very easy. If you subject your ozonide to oxidative quenching conditions, the product is going to depend um, on the substitution pattern of the alkene. So the disubstituted carbons of the alkene are going to turn into a ketone. Monosubstituted carbons of the alkene are going to turn into a carboxylic acid. And non-substituted carbons of the alkene are going to turn into CO2, just like um, when you oxidize um, an alkene using permanganate, essentially. All right, so now let's talk about the mechanism of this reaction. Um, so we all know that alkenes tend to react as nucleophiles because they're electron-rich species, um, and ozone actually is a dipolar molecule. It's a very interesting molecule. So ozone, if you pay attention, um, has formal charges of minus one in this oxygen and plus one in that oxygen, which makes this part of the molecule electrophilic and this part of the molecule nucleophilic. So basically what drives the reaction forward is the electrophilic part of the ozone because that can interact with your alkene. So this is what is going to happen when these two molecules come into contact. A dipolar dipolarophile uh, cycloaddition reaction is going to take place. So when the alkene uses the uh, electrons of the double bond to form an oxygen with this, uh, form a bond with this oxygen, this um, oxygen oxygen double bond can end up as a lone pair on the middle oxygen, and then um, the rightmost oxygen can use its negative charge to form a bond to the other carbon of the double bond. So, what you're going to get is something that looks like this. This is called the initial ozonide or molozonide. So, initial. Ozonide. This is a very unstable molecule. So this has two oxygen, oxygen single bonds. Um, usually whenever you have um, bonds between electronegative atoms, um, that causes a lot of instability. And here you have two of them. So that leads to um, this molecule falling apart to form more stable compounds. And this is how it happens. So what is going to happen is that um, basically this lone pair, let me um, use a different color. So this lone pair is going to end up on oxygen. This carbon-carbon bond is going to break to form a carbonyl here. And then this oxygen is going to use a lone pair um, to basically um, feed into that uh, newly formed carbon cation to give you a ketone in this case, 
and a carbonyl oxide. Now, the reason why these are more stable than the ozonide is because you have two carbon oxygen double bonds. Now, once you have formed these, now these can also act as a dipolar dipolarophile to do a cycloaddition reaction. So let me draw them in different colors. Okay, so the carbonyl is polarized this way, having a lot of positive charge on the carbon, so that it attracts this negatively charged oxygen, and the positive uh, charge on the carbonyl oxide leads to a greater amount of positive charge on the carbon of the carbonyl oxide. So another dipolar dipolarophile cycloaddition will follow to give you this intermediate, actually. And this intermediate is going to be more stable than the intermediate we used to have because instead of having two oxygen oxygen single bonds, this only has one. And this is the intermediate that we call the ozonide. All right. Now, what is going to happen to this is pretty interesting. So once you take that, and subject that to reducing conditions, such as, say, for example, zinc and acetic acid, this bond, the oxygen-oxygen bond, is going to get reduced. And essentially, after multiple hydrolysis phenomena, what, what you're going to get, what you're, what you're going to end up with is essentially... these two um, carbonyl hydrates, which will lose water to give you the final product of the reaction. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, and see you next time.